Hello and welcome in this video about Picto. We just released version 2.3 and uh, this release is packed with new features, improvements and bug fixes. And in this short video, I'm going to walk you through the main uh, features. Let's get started. The first feature is uh, for Capture One users. So I'm going to open a Capture One catalog that I have here. I'm going to filter based on edited images and I'm going to open this image in detail view. As you can see, Capture One does not generate high resolution previews and as a result we could never display the edited image uh, in full resolution. So instead we had listed the window and we had the master in the background. Now you, there is a new button that lets you compute high resolution preview either for just one image or for uh, all the images in the catalog or for just selected images. I'm going to click on that button. It's going to open the Capture One catalog where this image belongs and it's going to generate a, an export. And if I go back to Picto, now I have access to the large image. So you can do it from the menu as well. Again, it goes to Capture One, generates the high resolution preview, and here it is. So that's feature number one. Next, we've improved the timeline quite a bit. Remember, the timeline is a great way to access the time information of your images and see how your content is distributed over time. Makes sense when you apply a filter like the one I'm applying here. If I want to see all the images that are above three stars, I can immediately see uh, how they are, get distributed over time. Now with this new release, we add the ability to see the time of the image I'm hovering above right inside the timeline. As you can see this yellow bar moving as I move through my content. I can also select images and see the uh, corresponding times of those images right in the timeline. It is fully compatible with the selection window that you can draw on the, on the timeline. And last but not least, we've added the ability for you to click on the specific bar in order to see immediately what is in this time range. So it sets the filter based on the bar you select. So if you see some isolated content, it's now even easier to uh, find exactly what's happening in there. The next feature I'd like to show is the way we've uh, completely revamped the search bar and the filters. So we still have the filters, the basic filters on the top here. And, and you can see that we've uh, slightly improved the way you can filter on uh, images and on videos. So previously you could just click on the video icon to filter all the videos or to filter all the images. Now you can be a bit more precise and you can uh, select based on a type. So we have regrouped all the raw files except the DNGs in this raw um, item and you, you see all the other um, files that you have available. So I can find all my TIFFs, for example, or I can find, let's just check what's a TIFF. You can also combine things. If you want to find all your TIFFs and your JPEGs, then they get combined in the search bar. So that's a new way of filtering. Now, the search bar has been completely redesigned in order to be more uh, intuitive. So we've created sections based on the, the various search capabilities that we already had in Picto, and we added one more, which is the search by similarity. But now you can uh, precisely uh, control how a search is working. So if I'm, for example, looking for um, a white dog running in the grass, and I go at the top. It's sorted automatically by relevance because I'm looking at, uh, at this. And you can see that as I type, the search is being performed 
into the main window. Whereas in previous versions of Picto, we had a, a different type of uh, window that appeared when we were doing uh, content search. You have to validate using return in order for the search to be active. And then you can go and inspect. For example, here I have a video I want to inspect and uh, find the mushroom at this particular frame. We've also moved the uh, speech here, so it works the same. If you type uh, something that appears in one of the dialogues of your videos, you're going to see the results immediately in the main window. And I see immediately the, uh, the results. Make sure that your seat belt is securely fastened during taxi, takeoff, and landing. Let's go back to the grid. We've added a similarity search, so you can now drag a, uh, an image from, from anywhere, really. Drop an image here, you can browse from disk as well. So I can take an image from, say, the finder. You can drop it either in the, uh, in the search bar itself or in the similarity um, panel, and it's going to make that search based on the image, the target image. You can also control the, the tolerance uh, of your search from here. That's similarity. We've also completely revamped the way metadata works. So if I type anything that could match some piece of metadata, like for example, number 10, could be an aperture, could be anything in a caption, a date, a day, etc. You you see you get to see all the um, all the possible results, and they are ordered um, in a clearer way than it used to be. So if I pick a particular camera, for example, that contains ten, I can then, for example, look for a specific exposure time, and you see all these criteria being added. And just check that the camera and the exposure time are indeed the ones we've just uh, set up. We've also created a new section for file information where you can type things or file extensions or folder names, etc. It's going to find it. So that's the new search bar. The fourth feature I want to show you is a major feature of this uh, 2.3 release, and that's the ability to access your Picto catalog remotely, either on a local network, if you're at home and want to access it from another computer or from a tablet or a phone, or via internet. And all this happens without anything being um, published in the cloud, uploaded anywhere. So how does it work? There is a new button here called Share. And uh, this button lets you configure how you share your library here. I'm currently sharing it on my local network. Let's stop it for a moment. I can decide to share locally or publicly, publicly meaning internet. So you can see when it's shared publicly, it means that outside of your local network, uh, other computers or phones will be able to access it. In order to, to, to share anything, you have to create an account. The account gives a first level of security um, because whenever you open the, your browser on the uh, remote computer, you will have to log in as well using the same account. There is another level of security, which is um, the fact that we encrypt all the data being sent between the uh, computer that requests uh, to view the catalog, for example, and the server, which is uh, currently this instance of Picto. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to restart my, um, my server, my share, if you want, and uh, I call my workspace, the, which contains all my images and videos here, uh, Picto at Office, because I'm sharing it on my office network here. And I start. So my instance of Picto becomes a server 
that is that can be reached from a web browser uh, through a specific address which is always the same and once you log in it's going to resolve the IP address of your real machine and be able to connect to it. So if you click on the open web browser it opens um, the web browser. So here I have uh, a workspace chooser and remember my workspace is a picto at office so I have multiple workspaces I can access and um, what can I do from here I can run searches I can access all my sources so here I'm seeing exactly the same thing as I see uh, on the picture that is on the left I can see my sources I can see um, my various catalog types I can see my albums and uh, for the sake of the demo, I'm running on the same machine, but imagine that this browser is running on a different machine on the same network. It will be able to, to see all that. And if I type my the search I did before, the mushroom search, it's going to find the same results. All is from a web interface. I have access to the videos and you have a scrubber here that's going to show you the content of the video. You can configure a number of things in the display. You can configure how the uh, what type of metadata is being displayed in this view. I can add, for example, short information, file information, and user annotation. I can also change the order in which those fields are being displayed in the uh, in the view. From any image, I can double click and see navigate through the various photos or videos that are being taken. And I can access the, either the preview or the original from here. So I can download effectively. So imagine you are on a different machine in this, on the same network. You can download a large thumbnail or you can even download the original raw files or the original, original video file if you need to. You can also select items from that view and either add to an existing album or create an album from the selection. So I'm going to create an album called For Mushrooms. The album is created successfully. I can navigate to my albums here and see it with those four images. And if I go back to Picto, which is running in the background, I will see the four mushrooms album being created. So this is um, my full catalog being shared over the local network. But as you noticed before, maybe there is another one here running, which is called Picto at Home. And Picto at Home is a different machine. So this is a machine that is running in a different location it has a different IP address. It also has a picture catalog, and I can do the same type of things. So if I'm looking for a specific um, item, I can navigate through the various images, and I have the same options to download the thumbnail or the original. And remember, this is a computer that is running in a different location. So I can access um, this instance of Picto remotely. So that's a great feature if you're uh, away from home and you have your uh, Picto server running. You can access it from your phone. You can create albums. You can put things in, uh, uh, in those albums. You can uh, download images, download videos, uh, download raw files, uh, if you forgot one, for example, and you need to do some editing. So that's uh, a wrap for this uh, release 2.3. We hope you enjoy what, uh, what is new and what has been improved. And we look forward to your feedback. Take care. Bye-bye.